we're going to have a demonstration and a chat from the folks who brought us this beautiful bourbon to begin with. So if you could just grab a seat for a minute, if, if you're not in line at the bar. Um, this is our last little bit here, and we have two special guests with us uh, this evening. Chanel McGee, she's a director of international sales and group sales at Kentucky Department of Tourism. And Jessica Morgan, a longtime friend, a director of tourism development at Louisville Tourism. And they are going to tell us everything to have to go with cocktails and conversations with them and bourbon. Please welcome to the stage. Nice round of applause. Come on in. Come on. Oh, this is your song. All right, there it is. All right. A little, little Dua Lipa for a, 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 a Saturday afternoon. Um, Jessica, I'm, I'm going to put you over here if sure. that's all right. So um, this is a great kind of a dovetailing of lots of things coming together. Tell us about, I'm, I'm going to start with you, Chanel, on the state level. What is the importance of bourbon to, to Kentucky? Well, it's, it's, you know, a Kentucky story, but it's bigger than that as well. Uh, bourbon is... America's native spirit. I don't know how many of you all know that out there. Um, but, you know, it really helped establish us on an international level. It's a $9 billion industry. Um, so some of the same conversations that you all have been having about corporates kind of um, changing the way and bringing about change within a state. Well, those were the, the pioneers of this space um, for Kentucky and, and kind of helped us tell a better story in both the DEI space and LGBT space. So I'm going to ask either of you this. What is bourbon? Is bourbon something very specific, right? It is. Okay. So in um, 1964, um, when they came about establishing it as Kentucky's, um, well, America's native spirit, um, they de uh, designated some rules along with that. So it has to be 51% corn. Um, it can be distilled no higher than 160 proof. We're not making vodka here. Um, it has to be in a new charred oak container. I say container because that's how it was written, not barrel. Um, if you all know anything about these barrels, uh, they can be filled up to 500 pounds. It's easier to move a barrel than it is a box. So Everybody gets a barrel to take home, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, it has to be placed in that barrel at no higher than 125 proof and then bottled um, no lower than 80 proof. Yes. Along that process, there can be no other additives. And that's, that's how you make bourbon. Okay, so help us out. Difference between bourbon and whiskey. So all whiskey or all bourbon is whiskey. Not all whiskey is bourbon. So that's your, your definition. It's a category. Bourbon is what you're drinking right now. Yeah, 95% of the world's bourbons made in Kentucky. Uh -huh. the, the, the rule of thumb right now is it's about two barrels per every one Kentucky resident. So we all have two at home that we allocate out to all of our friends to come and visit us. Wait, we, two, two barrels produced each year for every Kentucky resident? It's kind of the, the number in brick houses and storage right now. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, all the other 5% of the bourbon that's made is counterfeit. And what percentage of your, of your product is exported versus drunk in state? And any idea Ooh. on that? A third. Oh, so okay. a third is actually uh, at Well, you all drink. Well, you <laughs> have to think there's, there's a lot of barrels just sitting. Okay. So there yeah. are 10 million barrels in total. Um, or, is that right? Just waiting um, to be distributed. But when it comes to sales, about a third of them go out of state. So of it, it is a tourism draw, clearly, right? For sure. Um, I, I love one of the pieces I saw. It says, uh, you, you can drink bourbon straight, but you don't have to be straight to drink bourbon. Uh, that was a nice little LGBTQ plus um, putting it together. Talk to me about the urban bourbon, uh, something sure. you guys do in Louisville. Yeah, so um, in Louisville. First of all, is it Louisville? Louisville. It's Louisville. Louisville. You got it right. Okay. You did it right the first time. Right. Well, as you said, bourbon is a business. It's a draw. Um, when we first started kind of the bourbonism uh, as an attractor for visitors. Bourbonism, I like yes. it. Yes. Um, as an attractor of visitors, it was about 2007 when we uh, kind of conceptualized a, a trail of distilleries. Okay. In 2007, our visitors were about 11 million a year in, in Louisville, Kentucky. 
Um, 2008, we launched the Urban Bourbon Trail, and that was when our first distillery in downtown Main Street opened up, which was a return to Whiskey Row, which used to be the Wall Street of Whiskeys, where all bourbon was produced on Main Street Love downtown Louisville. Love the Wall Louisville. Street of Whiskey. These are great, great and, little places. And when Prohibition happened, all of these distilleries moved out of the city and um, went to the more rural areas where they could brew their juice in, in the, the confines of, you know, uh, areas where the, the local sheriff couldn't find them. Now, fast forward to present day, we've got 10 distilleries in the downtown area. Um, looking at our visitor profile numbers over the course of that 2007 to 2019, we have 19 million visitors. Wow. And the, the incredible you know, piece about that is, especially too, when we're looking at visitor profile studies for what people are coming to Louisville for, it used to be really visiting friends and family or shopping or museums. That has really topped the list now, about 39 to 40% of people coming to Louisville is for bourbon. Um, and so we have the Bourbon Trail, which is our 10 distilleries, but also includes um, over 50 bars and restaurants that have 100 or plus more bourbons on their bar. So what, what are the biggies? What, what are the biggest biggest bourbons, the biggest names that we would know from Kentucky? Some of the biggest names you would know that are in Louisville are, is the Brown Foreman Corporation. Um, Brown Foreman has Woodford. Yep. Uh, they have Old Forester. Uh, but they also have a huge portfolio of other products that you probably have heard of, Sonoma Couture, or, you know, Corbel Champagne. But I'd like to mention Brown Foreman because they're really one in the space of taking the business of bourbon and, and being a leader in that space. But also when we talk about LGBTQ, right. they have really leaned in there as well. Um, they are you know, a main corporation in the city of Louisville. They are one of our largest uh, employers. Um, and something uh, Nadine, uh, Nadine referenced earlier about how businesses lean in. When Brown Foreman steps out and does something like participate every year in our Kentuckiana Pride Parade, which is coming up on June 18th, or when they you know, have DEI committees that have been in place for a year, or they receive 100 on the human rights campaign every year, you know, 10 years running, it's corporations like that that take a stand and take a step out in a, in a traditional, as we've kind of been hearing, old right. boys network um, that other than distilleries right. follow suit. So that's interesting because usually when people think of bourbon or, uh, you know, whiskey, they kind of think of a uh, good old boy, right? Yeah, sure. they, they think of, uh, you know, not necessarily DEI. Um, talk to me about how some of the distilleries um, are, are reflective of the LGBTQ or the uh, DEI, the, the entire umbrella there. Well, I can speak to that. As, as I mentioned with Brown Foreman, you know, really um, their participation in all the DEI mm -hmm. efforts. But it's more than that. It's participation in things like our LGBTQ task force committee that we have at, at Louisville Tourism. Um, you know, they're providing us feedback and input from their business's perspective of how we market and, and jointly, you know, communicate the message of bourbon in, in Kentucky. But it's just also, too, it's it's taking a stand and, you know, in their, their positioning that they have taken with things of the uh, you know, Mar Marriage Equality Act and, and participating in yep. an incredible legislature that has, you know, been shaped coming out of Kentucky. Um, they do more than just make bourbon. They really lean in on the, on the policy side and on the business side. And I understand there's some minority owned and produced uh, batches. Yeah, which, yes. which ones are those? Sure. I actually yeah. have a bottle here I can uh, show. So um, this is Bro Brothers. So this oh. is three African American brothers that came together, and they are the first um, African owned. African American owned distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, they launched their brand a couple years ago and are producing some great spirits. What are we making today? Someone talk us through. What, just give us an idea. Well, of what are we, we going to bring our, our guest up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to say it okay. first. Yeah. All right. Well, what we're going to make today, is, uh, if you all are enjoying it, is the bourbon old fashioned. And the old fashioned is uh, Louisville's official cocktail. You all may think it's the mint julep, but it is not. Um, and this cocktail has a great story. Um, something we have been doing in Louisville right now is uh, discovering and uncovering the untold stories of our uh, black history and heritage. Okay. And one of those stories lives within the old fashioned. Uh, this cocktail was invented and created by a man by the name Thomas Bullock. Thomas Bullock was a black bartender that worked at a uh, club in Louisville called the Pendennis Club. And he made incredible cocktails that were world renowned and he became the first self-published um, black author of a cocktail book in 1919. Um, he took the brandy old fashioned, which was a, a similar cocktail made with brandy and added bourbon to it. Um, his version is a little bit different than some of the old fashions you see today, um, but he put his own spin to it and it still continues to be the official cocktail of Louisville. Well, then I think we need to inv invite our friend up. Hey, Brian, would, would you help us make this cocktail? <laughs> uh, I know, I understand you know a thing or two about cocktails. With my arm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and I think if you're good, you might be able to drink some of it too when we're done. Um, 
you want to talk us through what we're looking at there sure, in the meantime? So there are over uh, 95 distilleries in Kentucky. Um, over 40 counties in Kentucky have a distillery. Um, so it's big business here in Kentucky. So everything that we do typically has this kind of bourbon spin to it. Because in Kentucky, if you don't drink bourbon, you eat it. We add it to our culinary programs and all of our chocolate recipes. Um, it really is a unique spin um, that is a part of our culture and who we are as Kentuckians. So um, we invite you all to enjoy this piece of Kentucky with us when we share a cocktail with you today. All right, so let's get going. How, how, how does this work? When well, you guys, now that I know that Brian's this great mixologist, yeah. I know yeah. you have like over what, 50 recipes that you've made on your own. At and least. Food Network. Yeah. Um, this is a very simple recipe, but it's one that is very classic. And this elegant. is an old fashioned? It's an old fashioned. Okay, good. So we say old fashioned, but this is an old fashioned. Okay. So in, in Thomas Bullock's cocktail book, The Ideal Bartender, yes. he maps out the recipe for this, which is you know very particular and very precise. Okay. Um, but we're going to start with a glass. Jessica, okay. sorry. Old fashioned, old not fashion. old fashioned. There's the, his cocktail recipe book, it's old fashioned. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Um, we added the ED. I'm not sure where that. And I noticed something that he does different because he has the orange bitters instead of the Yes, the orange Angostura. bitters, and he uses lemon instead of Ooh, orange. Yummy. So go ahead, step up to okay. step up to the Plate. So we've got Should your ice. Get the water so we're going to take a little bit of the sugar. Okay. And this a little we're bit, making like a, a, a on-the-fly simple syrup here, but we got enough water melted in there. So okay, just a, a dash of sugar, and then you want to mix it in. Yep. He knows what he's doing. I need to tell him what to do. I noticed right. you had some uh, a brown liquid in your cup on your, your oh. picture up there. Oh yeah. Can you tell us what that was? You know what? I, that was for a photo shoot, so I, I don't think it was anything, anything that yeah, you right. would like, be nothing missing good. out on. <laughs> Maybe it could have been iced tea. Do you have a favorite bourbon? Um, you know, I, um, what would be my favorite, like, is it for a mixing bourbon? Whatever, or? whatever your pleasure So you might go to mixing bourbon, but not my sipping bourbon, is either a Four Roses or, oh, a, uh, or a Bullet. That's yeah. for mixing cocktails, Bullet's great. Yeah. but not for sipping. Yeah. So what's your go-to? Ooh, sipping. Um, I like Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Yeah. Yummy. It's hard to find, but it's good. There are some that are sort of overrepresented that I don't really, you know, care for that much that we sell a lot at the lounge. Yeah. We'll sell the bottles out, and I think it's because they're very pretty bottles. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know, well, when, when I taste them, it's like, you know, yeah. I don't yeah. really get them that much. All right. So are we so going to do bitters? We're going to do a couple dashes of your okay. bitters. Do you like it more bitter, or do you like it less bitter? Uh, this is your drink. I, I like it more bitter, okay, so I'm going to so do gonna three or bitter. four. Yep. Then we've got our... Special Evan Williams. Oh, I love it. Label here. So you're going to open awesome. that and okay. pour that whole thing in. How many ounces is that? You can actually just go ahead and give us a little bit of a stir. Yeah. And how it's many about ounces? two ounces. Two. Okay, perfect. It's about a perfect yep. cocktail size ounce. Okay. So get that sugar stirred in there nicely. Yeah, is it dissolved? It should be. Actually, will you? That's, my hands are slippery for okay. some reason. <laughs> All right, then you're going to take your lemon and just get a nice um, peel. Oh, we're going to just do a, like just a little a nice like peel, this because yeah. we don't have a peeler. We don't have, yeah, actually, I should put it right here. Did you not get it either? There you go. I loosened it. You loosened it for me. Yeah. Ooh. She takes a strong one to open it. Now, Brian, this is going to be judged when, when you're done, by the oh, way. Okay. We have I the mean, judges at the there's table. Not much, there's they not, have not much. There's not much to go wrong. Hold up. Oh, that's good. Okay. I better, better be at, five, at least a 5 9. And then, do and you want me to express this a little bit, or just yeah, rub the? Yeah, put it around the rim and yeah. just put it in there. Okay. And that is your Thomas Bullock. Wow. Who's old who's fashion. judging this one? Can we, we make a second one? We can make whoever? a couple more. It's yeah. So, so because I maybe we should dump the water out of this too. Much. Or is that okay? Look is it right. too much? Okay. You're a purist, I clearly. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. I don't know. Don't I, any water I've never purpose. made it without a sugar cube. Well, I know, and in, in his book, he says a lump of sugar and a a, a block of ice. Okay. I like that. <laughs> Chanel's a uh, neat. Do you guys like, do you like Manhattans too? Yes, of course. I love Manhattans. What's your ratio of bourbon to vermouth? Uh, two to one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like I your know. style. So, so I was told long ago, drink your bourbon however you like it. I'm a neat girl. Yeah. I, I don't like ice, I don't like water, and I don't like extra calories. So that's what I go with. Oh, but so uh, enjoy any way you want to. How many bourbon drinkers in the room? Me. All right, so, some, some seasoned cocktail. <laughs> still, still with the problem. I don't know why. It's like, I don't know why my hands are. There we go. There you go. 
going to do that and express that over there because all the oils are coming out. Jessica, going back to the business for a minute, you said 11, what was the total, the, the cumulative total number of barrels? Uh, it's two to one. Okay. Two barrels to one person in the state of Kentucky. Okay. Is, is there an economic impact estimate for what bourbon means to the, the, the economy of Kentucky? It's a $9 billion industry as of last Just year. Just in the state? Mm -hmm. Wow. That is Kentucky bourbon. And in, in terms of ranking in the state, in terms of industry, that must be up there pretty high? It is, let alone the, the other side of it when it comes to, um, you know, the, the tourism element of it. That it's isn't even included right. into it. So the KDA, the Kentucky Distillers Association, or works on all of those numbers, um, whether it be events, whether it be, um, you know, the, the hospitality industry, all of it being included um, within those numbers. Oh, right there. Yeah, we get a special... Oh. A special, <laughs> special barrage. And th these are the judge right here. Oh, the judges. Are the judges. <laughs> the judges. Oh, I got to make you. A more don't give it to the Russian judge, whatever you do. I've, 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 I don't I've heard about that. Perfection. <laughs> <laughs> he skates, he mixes and serves. L let's so do one more. Okay, yeah, one more. Okay. okay. And the growth of, of the industry. Is it charted? How much is this growing on an annualized basis? Did it flatten out during COVID or did people go crazy drinking during COVID? Oh, it went up. People uh, definitely stocked their bars. Um, and in the next, I think it's three years, mm -hmm. there is a $10 million investment in distilleries coming. Um, and that might be two years now yeah. that I'm thinking about it. So there has been some changes in the legislation to allow them to open a different type of visitor center. So you'll see a couple more of those um, opening up across Kentucky, um, specifically in Louisville area. So you'll see kind of um, smaller experiences, smaller tourism experiences in the Louisville area where you might ha not have the whole distillery there, but you can still have a piece of gotcha. what they're doing within the area. And from the visitor's perspective, the at the... Coming to Louisville and doing a distillery tour, it, it looks different from every location you go to because right. their methodologies are different. You're getting a lot more of these small batch producers. You've got uh, places like Angel's Envy who, you know, ages their bourbon in their barrels, but then they move it over into brandy wine casks to finish or gotcha. port, you know, port rum and wine casks I mean, to finish. It's, so it's, it's the, the visitor experience around bourbon is, is all about making it, but as Chanel said, it it is really so much more because it's really infused in our, our culinary scene. It's in our history and heritage. Um, and now with the uncovering of these stories of uh, you know, the, the black history and heritage of bourbon making is actually the newest thing that we're really diving into and really um, excited about too.